Thank you. Individual animal management, e-sheep, all started as a bit of an idea in CRC1. Mum, some have even been suggested it was a whim. But it was really a question, could we imagine a sheep industry using advanced technology as a basis for precision management, something like the cotton industry or some parts of the dairy industry? Controversial concept because it relied on investment rather than just a cost reduction. From an R&D point of view, we had a very simple charter. <laughs> Five points. Improve the accuracy of measurement and recording. Turn physical measurements into useful, idea, useful information. Look at options for real-time data processing and decision making. Develop apps or decision support and operational software. And investigate novel opportunities and applications based on electronic technology. An imposing list. And the first point we looked at was really machine accuracy of measurement for fleece, body, and reproductive carriers in shape is very high, relatively modest in cost, pretty easy, nothing to be done there. But recording accuracy has traditionally been problematic. Most commercial properties have no unique tags, and even where there is a visual tagging system, error rates are uncomfortably high. For example, just simply recording a weight or a roll call event can have errors of 1% to 2%. But for more complex operations, like fleece or carcass tracking based on visual tags, error rates are more commonly 5% to 10%. So electronic ID and paperless recording offered the prospect of improved efficiency for current operations and the opportunity for more measurement and recording in future. The immediate value for studs was obvious, and that's the subject of the next presentation by Mark Mortimer. So how do we translate measurements into useful information on which decisions can be based. Understanding the production consequences of measurements and their economic impact is what we are generally trained to do. Electronics and automation are not our traditional disciplines, and we had to understand the operation and mechanics of electronic ID-related systems and the people who develop them and sell them. So what are the potential benefits from adopting precision management? For the wool enterprise, traits such as fibre diameter, fleece weight, CV of diameter are very highly repeatable and so a single measure at say a hogged age gives a very accurate measure of the likely lifetime performance. It also means that the same information could be reused on different occasions or multiple occasions for selection or management purposes. Selection of hogged ewes can give generation, current generation responses, longer term genetic responses. Highly selected weather flocks can be financially attractive. Objective clip preparation can supply additional benefits and variable age culling instead of culling at a given age is also an option. These are the possibilities. With land production, monitoring growth performance for tighter specs and targeting multiple markets with different lambs can lead to more efficient meat operations. Reproductive management is especially important Ram choice and mating all allocation could also be considered part of a precision sheep meat operation. In the dual purpose, purpose merino operation adds complexity but also highlights opportunity. You can do something about the wool enterprise, something about the crossbred lamb enterprise separately, but then it's possible to get the balance right between the two sub enterprises and optimise how you allocate ewes and rams to each part of the sub enterprise and what rams go with them. So the opportunities are there, but with hindsight, I would have to say it's always difficult to do a benefit cost analysis when the benefits rely on some innovation still being developed, such as electronic ID in its application. The costs, costs are likely to fall with increased adoption, and especially when a sizable part of your target audience don't really believe your assumptions. I'm happy not to be doing a benefit cost analysis of the National Broadband Network or the future purchase of a fleet of submarines. <clears throat> but we translated these benefits into a form that may be useful for advisors and producers contemplating precision management in the future. The benefits depend on location, structure of the enterprise and production level, and so the decision support apps were targeted accordingly. In the software, handle all those things like flock structure, selection, weathers, etc., under a package called Smart Merino. 
But some of the real advent really came in decisions in real time. Decisions in real time mean choosing the destination or fate of an animal at the time of measurement. Usually we allow ourselves the luxury of measuring everything, going back home to the office, going through the animals, and then coming up with a paper list to be able to do the selection. But if the selection process is accurate, real-time selection requires no prior information. You can use the information that comes on stream and avoids the second handling of animals. It becomes much more powerful when an animal has an ID and you can use a lot of information. So, for example, we developed a thing called race site classer where real-time decisions involve multiple traits. We might collect fibre diameter and CV at diameter prior to or at shearing, might add a fleece weight to shearing, and then a body weight after shearing when the final decisions are made. Interim calculations can be made at any step along the way, but at the final weighing, body weights added, final selection uh, merit calculated, the animals allocated via communicating with an auto drafter, all done at the time of measurement. Race side class was one of a suite of algorithms that were developed to allow real time or near real time operational decisions. Others included virtual wool classer, optimising objective clip measurement in measured, based on measured fiber diameter, simultaneous assortment, which is just allocating use in a dual purpose operation to meet or wool subflocks, lamb growth predictor using new weight in combination with previous weights to predict future weights and target slaughter dates. These pieces of software were developed first as standalones to test the algorithms and then incorporated into manufacturer's software commonly. So the apps are still around, but a slightly different form. Totally new technologies were developed and trialled the proof of concept stage. Not commercial yet, but certainly on the shelf, awaiting future commercial application together with the software apps that could transform the data. Walkover weighing, recording weights of animals in a paddock without mustering or human interference. Pedigree matchmaker using association between ewes and lambs an abattoir recording where transferring an animal's ID from the live animal to the carcass, the first step in carcass feedback. Ram Select was also, which also will feature tomorrow, used a similar approach, identifying rams for sale and their genetic information in real time, take records on breeding values and rate them to key commercial, commercial profit drivers, and it offers the opportunities for new applications later on for RAM team management. But I'll finish just by saying the job isn't finished. Does limited adoption so far mean that we have underachieved on our charter? Certainly not. I think the investment by the CSC has kept the sheep industry in front of the game for new applications of technology. In fact, it's hard to see where the investment of new technology would come from without the, the CRC. But there's more to be done and new technologies are waiting. Real-time processing, for example, up to now, has been achieved by using simple algorithms that are inexpensive in computer time and power. But the rapidly expanding presence of cloud processing, distributed databases, big data, mean that complex computing, even breeding value estimation, will be transformed in the future. Similarly, downstream identification, financial transactions, quality assurance and market feedback are likely to be overhauled by the rise in blockchain tech methodology, where computers maintain the block links between products as they move down the market chain. It will be important for the partner organisations to use some of their human resources to monitor and think about such opportunities. And if I could conclude by saying, if I had any advice for these agencies, it would be to find people like Steve Semple or Mark Mortimer, people who like sheep, understand electronics and have no fear in developing and using computer software. Thank you very much.